The 3.3 Arkan Quest interlude opens us to a lot of fascinating story beats and concepts that definitely hold up to Devat's grander powers. The three concepts of knowledge, fate, and time were constant in Devat that have been somewhat mentioned in several aspects of Mondstadt, Liu, and Inazuma, but were never given a main spotlight until Sumeru's Wanderer story. So today, I want to explore these three concepts and how they form this fascinating hierarchy of manipulating the worlds of Genshin Impact. So let's begin with the concept of knowledge. We saw that Scaramouche removed the traces of the Balladeer, Kabukimono, and Kunikuzushi in an attempt to rewrite history. But we see that the Ermin Cell doesn't have that kind of power and instead only changes the perception of how that history went. So let's dive deeper into that. Knowledge in Genshin Impact is the culmination of information that has been known, found, and synthesized over the course of Devat's lifespan. Genshin Impact's definition of knowledge is characterized into two things. First is that all Teivatya knowledge is connected to the Ermin Cell. If a piece of information has been thought, said, written, or photographed in direct reference to something, the Ermin Cell will have record of this. The only exception to this are creatures that are not native to Devat. Furthermore, any altercation that happens to the Ermin Cell affects every native Teivatian's cognition of that knowledge. The only exception are pieces of knowledge that are encoded through allegories and metaphors. An example of this are fairy tales. But I think this also extends to any information that has been coded a certain way. If fairy tales count as new pieces of information despite alluding to something because they're technically not direct references, then I theorize that using a cipher like Morse code or Caesar's code would also bypass this restriction. If an intelligent person finds a way to encode this information in a way that doesn't directly reference their intended target, then they would be able to bypass the information. Say, an intelligent scientist? But I digress. Scaramouche's attempt to erase himself, though, doesn't work because of how the three concepts of fate, knowledge, and time operate in Genshin Impact. To explain this better because it is a difficult concept, I'll show you the difference of what I called altered history versus alternative history. Alternative history is essentially what Scaramouche does. Certain aspects of history have been erased through the Ermin Soul, which create alternative perceptions on how history came to be. Think of this like a straight line. Scaramouche erased segments of this line that pertained to himself, but the line still stays as one path. There are two important constants that make an alternative history different. One is that even though there are gaps, the line is expected to continue from start to finish, meaning that all events up to the point of the altercation have already happened. We see that in the game, History has changed to somehow fill in the gaps, but the effects of those events are virtually the same. Niwa still died, the Six Harbinger seat is still vacant, and the numbers haven't been adjusted, the Kaidahara still fell from grace, and Senora is still dead. The actual effects and consequences within history have not been altered. A lot of people like to refer to the current in-game state post-Wanderer as new history, when that's not completely true. The history we see in the game is still the timeline that we've played up until this point. Everything that has happened in the past events with Kunikuzushi, the Balladeer, and Kabukimono is still considered by both Nahida and the Wanderer as the objective truth, simply that it was not remembered or recorded properly. For example, it is still objectively true that it was Scaramouche that killed the writhing Gokuden, not some mad swordsman. This is why he tells the Traveler to tell the descendants what he perceives as the truth, that the Wanderer was the one that almost wiped out the entire writhing Gokuden. A great example of this is the vase still being broken. If this was truly a new timeline where Scaramouche didn't exist, the vase that Paimon broke while panicking about the Balladeer would have fixed itself because there would be no reason for Paimon to panic. That is the core of alternative history. Time and fate haven't changed, but how people remember history has. But now we go on to altered history, the much more powerful and concrete altercation of events. Fate and time are two fickle things in the story of Genshin, and as concepts, they haven't been fully fleshed out. But altered histories are histories that have actually been changed, or the course of fate has been manipulated somehow. The difference between history altered by knowledge versus history altered by fate is that if fate changes history, it's more like a vein of possibility 
possibilities, like a line that branches further into multiple real instances, which I find fascinating by the way because you would expect this metaphor to be for the Ermin soul, but the Ermin soul doesn't necessarily have this kind of power. When fate alters history, it's more so the future of a person attached to their constellations and actions, and the best example of this is the wishing system. There is a reason that the wishing system's currencies are called intertwined and acquainted fates. If you look at the description of these materials, you get the following flavor text. A fateful stone that connects dreams. Its glimmers can entwine fates and connect dreams, just as how its glimmer links stars into the shapes of a heart's desires. No matter the distance apart, guided by the stone's glimmer, the fated will meet under the stars. The masterless stardust also states that perhaps it can create new destinies when in large enough quantities. If you pull for a character, there are two completely different instances that you have to respect. One is if you're successful in manipulating their fates and they come to you. In this altered history, a character goes with you in adventures, which is why we consider that all voice lines and character stories canon despite the Arkan quests and story events portraying the characters as not really being with a traveler. The Traveler has successfully manipulated fate so that they go adventuring together after their endeavors. We see the fruit of these actions manifest through what happens if they rest with the Traveler in the teapot, or if they share their hobbies with the Traveler, or when they play games or just hang out. These are all canon interactions that Genshin respects are just fates manipulated by the Travelers themselves. While on the other hand, if you don't get a character, then you are unsuccessful in weaving your fates together. This means that your traveler and your characters have never had that connection outside of the story quests and the Archon quests, because they were never fated to adventure. So, to summarize, the current timeline of Genshin isn't necessarily a new timeline. Fate filled in the blanks that Scaramouche introduced by adding new variables, but in the grand scheme of everything, history still happened as intended. But moving on to the next concept, fate. The fascinating lore of the wishing system and fate ties really close to the traveler's potential ability to reweave it. According to Dainsleaf, the threads of fate will be the travelers to reweave in order to save their sibling, which is a really fascinating thought. The traveler also has a locked story in their profile known as the Loom of Fate, not to mention that the Loom of Fate was also previously an abyssal operation for the sibling which might connect to the ancient mythology of the Moirai. I have discussed the Moirai in great detail in my Those Who Reweave Fate and the Trapped Sibling Theory videos, but let's provide a short recap here. In Greek mythology, the concepts of fate are known as Moirai, and they are the personifications of destiny. Destiny and fate are portrayed as cloth, and fate must be weaved through the threads of time happenstance, and fortune. According to Wikipedia, the role of the Moirai was to ensure that every being, mortal and divine, lived out their destiny as it was assigned to them by the laws of the universe. For mortals, this destiny spanned their entire lives, and was represented as a thread spun from a spindle. Generally, they were considered to be above even the gods in their role as enforcers of fate. The youngest watched over the moment of birth, the middle one spun out all the events and actions of life, while the eldest cut destiny with a pair of scissors. If the Wanderer and Nahida are the ones able to connect to Erminsul to manipulate knowledge and memories, then the Traveler and the sibling, as stars, may be able to reweave fate itself. A fascinating tidbit about the sibling, by the way, is that the Wanderer says that the heavens responded to them when they first arrived, and that they were summoned. Which means Celestia stole my goddamn 50-50 luck. Anyway, while it's difficult to change, it is also difficult to determine if it's truly immutable. What Scaramouche attempted to do is possible, but it may have been done with the wrong concept. He overestimated the power of the Erminsal's knowledge, but he should have looked deeper into another ancient incident instead. Instead of focusing on Rukadevada, he should have focused on what happened with A. Time. Time is a very unstable concept to pinpoint because we have yet to fully grasp it ourselves. Time in Devot works like an entire ocean, where each moment is transient but connected nevertheless. When we saw the concept of time in Genshin, we see that A was able to plant a Sakura seed somewhere in a plane separate of the time in its growth. This was also because of a higher power that assisted in Azuma a long time ago, the goddess of time, Istaroth. 
Things that happened in the future can affect the past, while things that happen in the present can affect both the past and the future. It's all a very convoluted string of events, which is why it's best to think of time as a stream. It flows, but it's not set in stone. Which is why I still believe that if Scaramouche really wanted to accomplish what he did, his biggest bet would have been to consult A considering that time is a much stronger concept than knowledge. Which makes his story all the more ironic, by the way, but nevertheless. But that's it for me. This was just a brief explanation of how the fate, knowledge, and time trifecta currently works in Genshin Impact, brought to you in the simplest terms that I could probably digest. The thing is, I think my explanation is still severely lacking because there's so many potential holes and pieces of information that have yet to fully be revealed. But if there is any kind of word of advice that I'm going to say, read the fairy tales like Flowers for Princess Fischl, and that really suspicious book that Lisa wanted from the Abyss Mages which talk about the Pale Princess and the Six Pygmies. But anyway, that's that's it for me. My name is Asin, thank you for chilling with me. Remember, read your Genshin books. The 3.3 quests are con- Ugh. The 3.3- Bleh.